So here are the top five fun things to do in Virginia Beach. Let's roll. Hey, welcome back to the Living in Coastal Virginia channel. Uh, today we are in Isle of Capri, which is at the top of the Holiday Inn, 39th Street. So we have an amazing view, which Sean will show you now. If uh, you are moving into the area, my wife and I run a small real estate team and mortgage team where we make that process as smooth and easy as possible. We are the people that respond to those. As much as we love shooting these videos, we love even more to serve you and your family. But you're here for the top five fun things to do in Virginia Beach. So let's get into that right now. Number one, we're gonna go with First Landing State Park. Uh, I love the outdoors. Virginia Beach is an outdoor community. There's ton to do outside, and for me, this is number one on the list. Your main entrance is actually off of Shore Drive, which you've never been down. is almost like a corridor feeling like you're out in the middle of nowhere. It is 2,800, 2,900, or two, I think it's 2,888 acres of out the middle of nowhere state parkness. Uh, and so you've, there's plenty to do out there. You've got about 20 miles of biking and hiking trails. Uh, I would highly recommend looking at getting a season pass. I wanna say it's only about $75 and that gets you in year round. Uh, the state park also has a section of it that's dedicated for oceanfront. So if you're looking for a section of beach that may not be crowded by a tourist, this may be a perfect spot. Uh, right next to it is actually the campgrounds. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I think for the area, um, I think it's one of the best campgrounds around. Uh, it is surrounded by live oak trees, which we mentioned in another video, which are these squiggle squaggly uh, trees that have low lying branches. Perfect for throwing up a hammock. I will say as a local, uh, you want to make sure that you reserve those early. They do get picked up quite quickly on popular weekends. And even though you reserve a certain type of spot, the actual spot itself is first come first serve. I learned this the hard way because they are most definitely better spots than others. Another insider tip here, um, you are not allowed to grab uh, the firewood falling from the trees. So you wanna make sure that you bring your own firewood. They will find you for it. Another quick notation here, they do allow pets. Um, again, make sure you bring those doggy bags or things to pick up their doodles with because nobody lets stop it in dog. <laughs> Uh, I love, love, love camping in hammocks. Um, my favorite one is actually the Eno Double Nest. We'll have a link down at the bottom if you have something you're looking to get. Uh, by far and away the most comfortable way to sleep in a hammock. And a little, uh, little, little insider secret there, you actually wanna catty corner yourself a little bit in the hammock so you can lay flat. But that with a blanket in the summer or early fall or late spring, man, it is fantastic. Number two is going to be outdoor related as well. We're looking at kayaking, canoeing, and paddle boring. I think with all of the surrounding water, uh, sea, bay, inlets, rivers, um, we have a lot to offer when it comes to water sports. All right, Sean, so let's see how good your editing skills are. You have the Atlantic Ocean, Rudy's Inlet, Linkhorn Bay, Back Bay, London Bridge, Creek, Asheville Creek, Thalia Creek, Elizabeth River, Lynn Haven Inlet, Stumpy Lake, and of course, First Landing. Now, I absolutely love paddle boarding. My kids do too. Uh, we have found that it is much, much easier to get the inflatable kind. Again, if you're looking for a good one, the one that we got is gonna be in a link down below uh, to check out. The inflatable is just so much easier than the rigid boards for packing it. Let's say if you're in a car and you don't have an SUV or a mounting system for that, you can just throw it in the trunk. Uh, and they come with these awesome little pumps that it makes it very quick and easy work. They do have a bunch of companies around here that provide tours for paddle boards and kayaks. 
Uh, my, one of my favorites is a company called Chesapeake Outdoors, and they do a sunset evening dolphin tour. So if you're looking to do something romantic with your partner, most definitely worth checking out. Totally reasonable on cost and a great company to do business with. This may, as a little added bonus of number two, be nothing to do with paddle sports, uh, but one of the big things actually here for tourism and or if you have uh, the chance to do experience it, parasailing is such a cool, cool experience. Being towed behind a boat, uh, being lifted up way in the air, being able to see the entire area or entire ocean front is such a unique experience. I highly recommend it. Rolling on to number three, the Aquarium and Science Museum. The aquarium is made up of 800,000 gallons of aquatic life. We have something like 10,000 animals there with over 700 species that actually live in the aquarium. Um, it's an amazing, amazing aquarium. I think it's one of the best ones on the East Coast. One of my favorite pieces of the uh, aquarium is actually the underwater tunnels where you can actually go under and it's this arcing uh, part of the aquarium or the tank where you get to walk through and actually see like sharks and turtles literally swim over your head. Uh, at least that was always my favorite part to walk through with the kids because the kids just think it's amazing. Another one of the cool events, I don't think they did it this last year, but they probably will bring it back, is the mermaid events where they um, don't tell the kids that it's not real, but uh, they have these uh, wonderful locals who dress up in mermaid outfits and actually swim underneath the water. It's actually really, really cool. The aquarium has also partnered with the scouts programs to provide a few badges. So if you're looking to get the scouts involved with something outdoor or local or some of the local wildlife, there are several badges that they can earn uh, through a program there. Uh, the aquarium also provides uh, some stay at home programs or homeschool programs or co-op programs that allow for some um, basically aquatic education uh, that you can partner with and get credits there as well. Uh, one of the things I think is drastically underrated about the aquarium is they have dolphin, whale, and even seal tours that they do depending on seasonality. So if you've never gone out on a boat and seen whales or dolphins or seals, most definitely something worth checking out. Two more things about the aquarium I think are worth of note. Uh, one is that you can actually get your wedding hosted here. Um, can you imagine walking your bride uh, back down the aisle through one of those water tunnels or having the backdrop of uh, you know the aquatic sea life swimming behind you? I think that would just be super cool. Uh, one of the things that's attached to the aquarium, so the last piece here, is that there is an adventure park, a zip line park. Um, attached to the aquarium. And so I believe they start at age five. They have varying degrees of difficulty. Uh, you can go get a pass. It's good for like three and a half hours. Uh, you do, uh, I would recommend if you're if scared of heights, you may need to stay away, or you can use it as exposure therapy and, and work on that fear of heights. Don't look down. Keep on moving and don't look down. Check. I'm looking down. Oh! Uh, but it is a super cool little spot, um, wonderful to take out the kids. They do have some concessions uh, stands right there next to the zipline park. And so if you want to go and uh, skip lunch and eat there, make a day of it, eat a picnic at the park, uh, it's definitely worthwhile. We've done it several times with our kids. All right, festivals and events. I think one of the things that Virginia Beach has done exceptionally well over the last few years is that we are a hub for uh, lots of local events. You have the Neptune Festival. It began in 1973. It was has the Northern, Northern American Sculpting Championship, the Neptune 5K Run, the Surf Classic, the Boardwalk Weekend Art and Craft Show, and a volleyball tournament and more for the Neptune Festival. You have the Virginia Beach Restaurant Week, where each of the major restaurants in the area come and compete. They provide a two or three course meal with fantastically discounted prices. You can come and get food to go and take home at a fraction of the cost it would normally be. You have the Coastal Virginia Wine Festival. It takes place at the Virginia Beach Convention Center, featuring local wineries, food, and entertainment. You have monsters on the beach, monster trucks on the freaking oceanfront. How cool is that? The Coastal Edge Coast Surfing Championships started in 1963, which is the nation's longest running surf competition, the second longest continuously run surf event in the entire world, which has live music, motocrossing, skating, beach volleyball, flag football, 5K run, swimsuit pageant, adult wiffle ball, and cornhole tournament. You have the sand soccer tournament. You have the beer festival and the battle of the beers, which is only two events of many 
uh, related to alcohol. We have the Oceana Air Show, which I actually was part of back when I was in the Navy. Uh, with HCS-84 Red Wolves in the helicopters, so HH-60Hs. We have a blues festival, a funk festival, uh, tons of different music festivals. And last, but definitely not least, and this is not the complete list, is a chocolate festival. A festival completely dedicated to chocolate. <laughs> Number five, which uh, is a little bit of a selfish pick myself, but I'm super proud that Virginia Beach now is a uh, proud owner or proud representative of a distillery down here at the Cavalier Hotel. Uh, Tarnished Truth is the name of it. We have uh, several different liquors that they have created since 2013. Tarnished Truth was actually founded by two Virginia natives, Andrew Yancey and Josh Canada, and a special shout out to Justin Boyle, who is their master distiller and chemist. It was helped founded by master distiller Larry Ebersold. I'm, I feel really bad if I mispronounce your name, but that's the best I could do without actually talking to you personally, uh, which has 40 years of experience. He helped us get off our feet in that area. So Tarnished Truth is over in the Cavalier Hotel. Um, they are attached right next to the Hunt Room, which is a fantastic restaurant. I highly recommend if you have the opportunity to go over there and do a tasting. It's about an hour long. They'll walk you through the entire process and how they do things and where they imported all of the distillery equipment, which is US made. And then um, if that's something that maybe you're not interested in, you can always just go to the hunt room. They have a big glass wall where you can actually see where everything is being done and where the work is being done. And you can enjoy some delicious food along with some of their fine, fine spirits. Well, hey, that was my top five fun things to do in Virginia Beach. If you find this content helpful, go ahead and hit that little like button. It lets me know that I am doing the right thing. Uh, if you would like to see more of this, we release videos usually Mondays and Fridays. You can hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification and be notified when something new comes out. And as much as I love making these videos, and maybe I'll get my wife in on one of these soon, uh, I like more helping you move nice and easy and smooth and stress fee into the area or out of the area if you're leaving. So give us a ring, send us a carrier pigeon, throw a Frisbee at us, whatever it is, an email. All the information is below. We'd love to hear from you. We do respond to those as quickly as we can. And we have a great team of people to help you make that transition fantastic. Until next time, I'll see you later.